U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry visits the memorial to Hiroshima's atomic bombing earlier today in Japan. Kerry, who was accompanied by foreign ministers of the G7 countries, delivered a message of peace and hope for a nuclear-free world. The Secretary of State is now the most senior American official ever to visit the site. About 140,000 Japanese people died in the bombing attack in the final days of World War II. New details this morning in the wake of the Belgium terror attacks. The suspects had originally planned to attack Paris a second time. Instead, they rushed to attack Brussels because French investigators were too close. No further details are revealed. This comes after Friday's arrest of terror suspect Mohamed Abrini, the man in the hat. Meantime, the father of key terror suspect Salah Abdeslam spoke for the first time to the media. I am very, very sad. I do not know how children could be dragged into this kind of scheming. I really don't understand what's happening in their heads. Really not. Both France and Belgium warn it is no time to relax. Despite these recent arrests, the terror threat level still remains high in both countries. Prince William expressing his grief over the Hindu temple fire that left more than 100 dead in South India. 105 people were killed in that massive fire. Officials think it was all sparked by fireworks. Thousands were actually packed inside the temple when the fire broke out. Police say a spark from one firework set off a separate batch of fireworks that were being stored inside that complex. The fire spread quickly, trapping people inside. 521 this morning, competition sure to heat up as both Democrats and Republicans eye the Empire State, the latest from the campaign trail in New York, coming up. But first, your winning lottery numbers. Good morning. Happening right now on Fox 29 Morning News. Police in West Conshohocken investigating the death of a person found inside a home. How a local college might be linked to this case. And do not be alarmed if you're seeing red today. Baseball fans gear up to watch the Phillies face the San Diego Padres in the home opener. Good day, everybody. It's Monday, April 11th, 2016. Let's talk about this. In Maniunk, people spent their Sunday chowing down at the Spring Street Food Festival. The event along Main Street featured 75 food vendors. It was the kickoff of the neighborhood's restaurant week. So starting today, you can get great deals at the participating restaurants all around the city throughout the month of April. Well, the weather looked picture perfect, Sue Serio. Yeah, it looked good, and it was chilly, but everybody who organized that event was sure glad they didn't have the Saturday weather. <laughs> they missed it by a day, because that would have been uh, uh, inhibiting, shall we say, if they had had the snow on Sunday. So at least it was bright and sunny, even though it was chilly. Now today, we expect to be a little bit warmer, but you do need your rain gear this morning. Bus Stop Buddy, of course, wearing his Phillies cap today, but also the waterproof jacket, because there are showers and clouds around this morning, and most of our temperatures are in in the 40s. There's a look at radar and you see way up to the north, maybe a tiny bit of frozen precipitation. It's really light what we're seeing, but some more rain coming through throughout the rest of the morning rush. Now it's 46 degrees with 11 mile an hour winds out of the south, 629 your sunrise time. 50 was the high yesterday, but with the breezes, it felt like it was in the 40s. Still, the sun was great, but we should be at 62 and that's exactly where we expect to be today for the Phillies home opener and hopefully we'll get the rain out out of here, out of here by uh, game time. And maybe we'll even see a few peaks of sunshine, but it will be windy at the ballpark today. Keep that in mind as well. Tonight, showers return in the overnight hours with a 54 degree low temperature. More on that coming up in just a few. Play ball, Bob Kelly. Yeah, and I saw Steve mention it could be a home run derby out there with the wind if it keeps pushing out uh, toward the outfield. Here's a live look, though. Southbound lanes in 95 right at the Bartram Avenue off ramp. This fella here disabled, uh, dead in the water, no lights on. Luckily, he's right under a, a street lamp, but watch, we're holding our breath here, uh, and hopefully we can get a PennDOT arrow truck or an officer there before this guy gets smacked from behind here. Again, this is South 95, right near Bartram Avenue uh, as you approach the airport. South 95 out of the northeast looking good. All the roads are wet and damp from the little rain that's been moving through. Watch it on the on and the off ramps. Here's a live look at 295 as you roll through Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Out in Pottstown, 
422 East. All the lanes are blocked at Old Swede Road, all because of a crash. That's right before you get into uh, Pottstown and Route 100. Over the weekend, SEPTA made some chit chit changes on its regional rail lines. Uh, a new timetable, just some minor adjustments for the summertime month. So just make sure you have a new timetable and you're ready to go for this morning. Now, the rain this morning could lead to some possible weather delays down at Philly International. If you do have a flight scheduled out or maybe heading down to drop someone off or pick up, you may just want to check with the airline and make sure they're on schedule. And if you're coming into the city today or maybe coming through the city uh, for the ball game or heading home after the game, just keep in mind the Kelly Drive, they're repaving it, not only the Kelly, but also the area around City Hall. And you really want to watch for those exposed manhole covers that left a lot of folks with uh, some flat tires last week. Uh, otherwise, the bridges look fine and no delays on mass transit. Lauren, back over to you. All right, Bob, thanks so much. Developing this morning, a very disturbing discovery when a body is found inside a West Conshohocken home. Investigators now left with so many questions. Dave Kinchin near the scene on Moorhead Avenue with more this morning. Hi, Dave. Good morning to you. A lot of questions here on the 200 block of Moorhead Avenue. Uh, we know a body was removed from a home here over the weekend. West Conshohocken police are not releasing much information right now, but we are told that the incident happened at a home rented by college students. We have no idea what school they may have gone to. Neighbors say that there was a party on the street held by some college students, but nothing that got out of hand. We're told we're continuing to check with police who are often tight lipped under investigations like these, especially if they happen to be working with the DA's office, which could simply be a matter of standard procedure here. Again, a body of uh, a young man, we're told, in his early 20s removed from a home on the 200 block of Moorhead Avenue in West Conshohocken. But a lot of questions here, more questions than answers. We're trying to get those answers. We'll get them to you as the morning progresses. Back all to you. All right, Dave Kinchin, thank you so much. And police in New Jersey trying to find a missing pregnant woman, and they need your help. Starlene Harold was reported missing last Monday, but violent police say she hasn't been seen in three months now. Harold is four to five months pregnant. She wears a red wig, has a number of tattoos on her chest and hands. She also has several piercings on her face. If you recognize her, you have any information, you're asked to call police. Mm -hmm. Police looking for a pair. They say mugged an elderly man inside his own apartment. The 80 year old victim says these two were standing in his Glassboro apartment when he came out of the bathroom. He says they snatched money right from his pants pockets. Police are looking for Michael Graves and Elvia Canis Abando right now. They say Graves used to be a neighbor of the victim. Philadelphia Mayor Jim Kenney lending his voice to gun control advocates, hoping to make a difference all across the U.S. The mayor spoke at a rally yesterday at City Hall. It was held by a group of cyclists affected by the Sandy Hook tragedy. The cyclist, known as Team 26, riding to Washington to raise awareness about gun violence. Along the way, they hope to build support from mayors. There's plenty of guns in this country, and no one wants to take anybody's long rifles away so they can't hunt. Um, but children are hunting down children in our city. Uh, and without the gun, all you have is a fist fight. And we can recover from a broken nose or a black eye. You can't recover from a gunshot. And in our country. But once that lapsed, activists have participated in a ride today. from Connecticut to Washington for the last three years. Back in December of 2012, 26 people were killed when a gunman started shooting at a Connecticut elementary school. There's a new boss taking over the 76ers next in sports in a minute. How the new general manager plans to move the team in the right direction. And remember, you can take the weather authority with you everywhere you go with our Fox 29 weather app. You can see live radar anywhere. Get alerts to your phone. Search for it in the Apple or Google Play stores. We'll be right back. In Washington State may allow you to live out your Beamer dreams on a temporary basis. The Reach Now program operates like other car sharing services. Users can choose their car, all of them offered up by the car owners who might not be using the car for some period of time for some reason, like when they're on vacation and they just want to earn a little extra cash. The price tag $25 an hour. All right, in this morning's Your Health, can your birth order help predict your future health? Well, a new study in Japan tested thousands of children and found older siblings were more likely to have hay fever and food allergies compared to their younger siblings. Experts say parents protected the older kids from more germs while younger children were more exposed. 
California has become the third U.S. state to make birth control available to women without a doctor visit. The new state law allows pharmacists to distribute self-administered contraceptives without a prescription, but it's not exactly over the counter. Women requesting birth control will be required to fill out a health questionnaire and discuss different contraceptive options with the pharmacist. Supporters say the new law makes birth control more accessible to women, but critics argue it sends the wrong message to those teenage girls out there. For those people who do not know, I grew up in the city of Philadelphia. Uh, yes, yes I did. When I started doing stand-up, there was no bigger star than Will Smith. That's why tonight he's taking home the MTV Movie Awards' highest honor. I'm talking about the Generation Award, people. Kevin Hart presents another Philadelphia native, Will Smith, with the MTV Generation Award last night at the MTV Movie Awards. The group The Lonely Island performed a medley of Smith's songs before he accepted that award. Smith said he recorded his first album when he was 17 years old and that he was in the business for 30 years now. Kanye West's new album, The Life of Pablo, hits number one on the music charts. Only problem is I'm rich. I'm rich. Uh. He's rich and he's bankrupt? How did that happen? It takes the top spot on the Billboard 200. West had previously said Life of Pablo would be available exclusively on Tidal, but then announced you could get it on Spotify and Apple Music. Seems to be some confusion for Janet Jackson fans. She announced last week her Unbreakable Tour is on hold while she plans her family. Well, her concert promoter, Live Nation, says you can get a refund at the point of purchase, but there's some reports that venues are refusing refunds because the tour hasn't been canceled. If it's not canceled, they can't offer refunds. The youngest Jackson was supposed to perform in Atlantic City on June 11th. 5.53 this morning, a burglar hits a burger joint in Washington, D.C. What police say that man was after, and it was not cash. From the Fox 29 studios, this is Good Day Philadelphia. Right now on Good Day Philadelphia, police in West Conshohocken investigating after a person is found dead inside a home what clues they have to go on this morning. And a driver slams right into a home, narrowly missing a woman sleeping inside. Hear what the homeowners say the driver did right after that wreck. And the boys are back in town, so let's play ball. What do you say? We're taking you live to Citizens Bank Park to show you all of the events leading up to the Phillies home opener this afternoon. Good day, everyone. It's April 11th. Good <laughs> Morning, everybody. And there we have it. And of course, right. we're wearing our red and blue we for the Phillies. Red, red, blue, all, red, man. blue, and red. We got blue and red. He's Lawrence got all. white pants on. This just shows we go well together. We're good to go. We yes. We're but ready. it's also National Pet Day, so send us your pictures of pets using the hashtag GoodDay20. We're going to share them on air throughout the morning. So, Lauren, Ooh. we expect to see some pics of Diamond I then. I know. I mm -hmm. should have brought her in, but I'll send pictures. <laughs> okay, good. That'll work. Well, we didn't you have enough of Rufus when we did the 20-hour marathon? <laughs> we loved it, though. You can't get enough of Rufus. <laughs> right. <clears throat> Plus, if you don't have a pet, I have an idea, because I did Rescued on the Runway yesterday with the Delco SPCA, and we had some great animals that were up for adoption there. Aww. So, so today might be a day to get one. I, I think it would be a great thing. Please, Mom. Yes. Can we get a puppy? Mom, but the question is, though, will it be sunny in time for this game? Right. Well, opener? we'll settle for dry at this okay. point <laughs> because it is raining in a lot of places this morning. And I think we're going to go with a 5 out of 10 because it will probably end up being a half and half kind of day. We have showers around this morning. You will need the umbrella. Uh, bust up, buddy, rocking that Phillies cap for opening day. Temperatures are in the 40s, so at least it's only rain. Unless you're far to the north, maybe in the mountains or in upstate state New York, but we've got uh, very light rain moving through the area right now, as you see there on radar. Live look at our neighborhood, just damp out there with 46 degrees and sunrise happening at 629 this morning. So uh, the possibility around lunchtime of a lingering cloud or shower, but by about 3 o'clock, it looks like the rain will be out of here. Cross your fingers. High temperature, a little better than the weekend, 62 degrees. Bob Kelly.
Should be good morning, everybody. Almost 602 on a Monday morning, getting up, getting out. Roads a little damp, a little wet uh, from the over uh, from the overnight rain and maybe some sprinkles coming through the area. Live look at I-95. You can kind of see the glare off the road surface. And we're starting to see some volume pop. Big day in Philly. We have two home openers. The big one, of course, is the Phillies at 305. That's an all day or the block party starts at noon. Gates open up 1235. First pitch at 305. We're going to see a lot of unusual traffic patterns today. Folks getting out of work early, getting down to the stadium, but the big jam is going to come at the end of the game when the fans start to leave around 5, 530 or so. Instant traffic jam for the evening rush hour, but then the Seoul football fans trying to get into the stadium for their 7 o'clock home opener. So busy, busy day in South Philadelphia. Down in Wilmington, a leftover work crew along 95, right near 896. And if you use mass transit, SEPTA kicked in some new timetables over the weekend for all of its regional rail lines. Alex and Lauren, back over to you. All right, thank you, Bob. Coming up on 603, we're following a developing story out of West Conshohocken. Police are trying to solve a mystery after after bodies found inside a home. Yeah, neighbors say it's a house that's usually rented by college students. Dave Kinchin live near the scene on Moorhead Avenue with more on this story. Hi, Dave. Hi, good morning to you. There are a lot of questions here indeed. Uh, we're still waiting for more information from police. We can tell you that all of this took place on the 200 block of Moorhead Avenue in West Conshohocken over the weekend when a body was removed from a home here. West Conshohocken police are not releasing much information because this is still an active investigation and we're hearing that they could be working with the DA's office on this, which is a standard procedure in these types of investigations regarding a death. Neighbors say that there was a party on this street held by some college students, but nothing that got out of hand, according to what neighbors tell us. Now, we will continue to check back uh, in with more information now, but we're just being told that a uh, body, possibly of an, a, a male in his early 20s, was pulled from a home here over the weekend, and uh, neighbors had uh, apparently uh, had noticed college students being upset once this had taken place, once the body was removed from a house, but we do not know the circumstances. All of this under investigation will bring you the latest as we get it. Back to you. Okay, thank you, Dave. I knew this morning, police investigating a stabbing just blocks from Temple's campus. It happened around 4.45 this morning at Ridge and Cecil B. Moore Avenues. We're still working to get details on exactly what happened. We do know one person was taken to Hahnemann Hospital. We don't know their condition. Police have a vague description of a person seen running from the area. And police in Deptford are investigating an accident that left one car overturned on New Jersey 55, just north of exit 58. It happened just before midnight, leaving all lanes closed overnight. We are not sure if anyone was hurt in the accident. Right now, all lanes have been reopened. Though. Ben Salem police looking for the driver of a car that barreled right through the wall of a house, narrowly missing a woman sleeping inside. Well, the car landed inside this home. Oh, look at this. Early yesterday morning, the car crashed through a garden shed and was airborne before landing inside the home at the corner of Knights Road and Monroe Avenue. Both the woman and her husband were asleep inside. No one was seriously hurt. They say two men in the car told them to call 911 and then ran off. We could have been dead, but the grace of God, we still here. So the count. That's how the count. The woman was taken to the hospital for observation. The couple was in the process of renovating their house so they could sell it. Police say the missing driver may have been impaired. Well, jurors will resume deliberations in the trial of two Philadelphia police officers charged with wrongly beating a man who has since died in a separate incident. 31-year-old Sean McKnight, 28-year-old Kevin Robinson, accused of having beaten 23-year-old Najee Rivera during a May 2013 traffic stop. The officers said Rivera tried to get away after running a stop sign. They mistakenly believed he was running drugs, so they chased him down and a scuffle ensued. Prosecutors say surveillance video contradicts all of that and, and shows a very different story. Rivera died in a separate incident in December after being shot during a street fight. 6.06 this morning, an effort to end gun violence rolls right into our city. How Mayor Jim Kenney is supporting a group honoring victims of the Sandy Hook shooting. Plus, a historic visit in Japan, the message John Kerry delivered while visiting the Hiroshima Victims Memorial. 